I'm Howard Marks, technologist extraordinary and plenipotentiary at VAST, and I'm very happy to be back at a Tech Field Day event. It's my favorite place in the whole world. So I'm here today to talk about our fanatical obsession with availability. So traditionally, large-scale systems have some challenges related to availability. You know, first of all, there's just the basic fact, there's a lot more things to break. And so things are going to break much more often. And the traditional shared nothing model has a lot of complexity as it scales up. And so generally systems become less reliable or less available as they scale up. And we can see that in the shared nothing file systems. We can see that in the parallel file systems that are used in the HPC world even more because those systems are almost always bespoke and everyone is unique. And frankly, the HPC world is accepting of this thing called scheduled downtime that we at VAST are simply not accepting of at all. Our goal is the system will be up all the time. And that becomes critical when we start talking about universal storage. The more workloads you put on the system, the bigger the impact of it going down, the more important it is for us to keep it up. And so a series of issues from there being multiple single, single points of failure and more things to fail to frankly, just implementation issues where theoretically you could expand this way, but we don't support that or limitations on the depth of data protection because these systems were designed for fewer simultaneous failures. So I recently wrote a blog post that announced that we had achieved for a six month period, five, uh, six nines and a five, which depending on which language you speak is six and a half nines or six nines three. So our ability to deliver a high availability number is even more impressive when you consider our business model where we sell a relatively small number of relatively large clusters. So any one cluster is going to have a big impact on the overall availability if it goes offline. Um, and so when we calculate that out, we calculate the total offline hours over the total running hours of the system. And the math works out that if you're selling hundreds of systems instead of tens of thousands of systems, it becomes a difficult case. The other problem with shared nothing architectures is you, have this, you face this conundrum when it comes to reliability of whether you want a large number of nodes so that you'll increase the probability of node failures, or do you want a small number of nodes so you increase the blast radius of each failure, and you constantly have to trade that off every time you build a system. System becomes more reliable at scale. The front end servers are stateless, and so there's nothing to rebuild when they fail. So as we add additional front end servers, we have an affected availability except to increase it to ridiculous levels. You know, if you have a cluster with 20 front end servers and we can run perfectly well on one, the odds of all 20 failing other than some external event are relatively low. Um, and then, everything stored in HA enclosures and should something like an SSD fail, the rebuild is distributed across all of the front end servers. So a bigger cluster rebuilds faster because the rebuild task is distributed across more processing power. And that reduces the opportunity for cascading failures to cause the system to go offline because we've narrowed the vulnerability windows. So the bigger the system gets, the faster it rebuilds and the more effectively we manage things. And that means we can do things like run 30 terabyte drives, where if you ran you know, one of the shared nothing systems with 24 30 terabyte drives in a node and that node crashed, the rebuild has to move about 700 terabytes of data across all of the other nodes to do the rebuild. When we have failures, they're much more localized because there's the high availability enclosures and everybody can participate in the rebuild. But 
HA is a relative thing. Our enclosures are HA. There's no single point of failure, but there are external failures and there are customers who are just concerned about deeper levels of reliability than that. So we have an option for customers who are running relatively large clusters to change the erasure code striping. And instead of us writing wide stripes across as many SSDs as we can, we limit the number of strips of each erasure code stripe so that each enclosure only holds two strips. If you remember, we use N plus four data protection so we can correct from four failures. Since there's never more than two strips of any stripe on any enclosure, if an enclosure fails, it's well within the erasure code's ability to correct it. And so even failures at the enclosure level, which again, that's multiple failures to get there or some external failure. And to be perfectly honest, we built this feature for a hyperscaler who builds cheap data centers and they only have one power drop per rack. And so losing power at a rack is a regular event. And so they put one enclosure in each rack and they can take rack scale failures without taking the system offline. But it, but it works for customers who have better infrastructure because it just vastly increases the reliability. Now, the odds of both fabric modules in a single enclosure failing before we can get the first failure replaced is very low. But as you start having 20 or 50 enclosures in a system, very low when the units we're using are nines isn't, doesn't look as low as we would like. If you move to the enclosure HA model, you have to have both fabric modules in two different enclosures fail before anything gets replaced. And the odds of that, as you can see from the teal line at the top, are just ab astronomical. But this is uh, what you're showing us here is a illustration. Not it, is, a it is a it is a mathematical projection, not a field experience. Yes. OK, I just want to make sure. This, yeah. Yes, this is this is probability math, not field experience. We don't have enough systems with large enough environments in the field for long enough to be able to say we've collected five million system hours of reliability data and therefore we can present this. Um, and I did the same math against a prototypical shared nothing system. And that prototypical shared nothing system, when we run it as a hybrid, it's got a longer rebuild time because hard drives are slower than SSDs. And on a small system, the math still tells us that that's a relatively reliable system. That you could live with that. But when we start expanding that same equipment and that same protection model to 20 petabytes, the math predicts that, that we're gonna have five failures a year. And since the math can predict how frequently failures occur, you put in the annual failure rate and the number of devices and such. What we can't predict is the length of an outage this is really inverse probability of failure more than availability, because we the math of how long failures, you know, how long the system stays offline isn't easily estimable. But we're still talking about large numbers of failures for the hybrid systems. Even when we take that system and we say, we'll make it all SSD. In the small system, we get comparable, perform, comparable reliability. You know, both our system and their system at one petabyte look plenty reliable from the math. But when you start saying at 20 petabytes, then you start going, there's a lot of things to go wrong. And when something goes wrong, there's a lot to happen. And things just don't look nearly as good. So, so far, all I've talked about are how the architecture affects resiliency. You know, we did these things and architecturally they help. But Architecture is not the only thing that matters. Implementation matters at least as much. A bad implementation of a good architecture is a bad system. And so unusual for a startup of our age, we have over $35 million invested in QA equipment. We build systems, the scale customers buy them. We build to the customer's budget. We test systems at that scale continuously. 
you know, when I was a delegate, my usual question to a startup with who made a scale out system was how big have you tested it? Because the answer on how big does the cluster get was always, well, there's no limit. And how big you test it is a budget function. How big can you afford to have that hardware? And we've managed to do that. Our QA team is just as big as our R&D team. We really don't want customers to see problems. And this is also why we have very tight control over the hardware. If you start really doing software-defined storage and you let people run on any arbitrary in this x86 server, you very quickly discover that x86 servers aren't as identical as you would like them to believe. They're industry standard, but when we use the word commodity, it's a stretch. They're not, you can't fungibly replace a Dell server with an HP server when you're working at this level. The good news is customers see this and like it. And then we're just fanatical about support. You know, first of all, we don't distinguish between scheduled and unscheduled downtime. If a system is down, that's a problem. We don't, we build the system to not require any downtime at all. Expansions are non-disruptive, upgrades are non-disruptive. Even upgrades all the way down to the firmware on the NIC are non-disruptive. We simply don't believe in making people take their system down. And this fits with the philosophy of universal storage. If you have all of your applications on one system and you have to take it down even for 20 or 30 minutes to do some kind of expansion or upgrade, that's a huge disruption to your user community. Every time there's an outage, we do full postmortems on it and we provide that postmortem to the customer. So they know why the system failed, what we've done to keep it from failing that way again. And we have a team in R&D whose job is responding to these problems. Not only is their QA team to find the bugs, but when something comes up at a customer, there's a dedicated team in R&D in R to respond to those things, to make sure that things don't get lost in the source. We're a, we're a company that sells a small number of large systems to large customers. And we recognize that means we have to treat those large customers very, very well. To get a 300% ARR return, that means your customers are coming back for more and more. As I look at the sales model, we are very much about the expand part of land and expand. And that means we have to keep customers happy. And the good news is they generally are. Now, the other good news is some of these customers had parallel file systems in the past. And so they're comparing us to a very low standard, but they're still very happy. Our goal is just to keep adding nines. Ultimately, we want some, you know, five years from now to issue a press release that says, customer X has had no downtime for five years on their system because that's the goal. It's all about availability and it's all about making everything solid and available from both philosophy and architecture. Do you have any real world data you can share with us on what you've experienced so far? Um, what we can share with you is that six nines point five plus five, six month availability to date. So the, over the past six month period, less two weeks, because I wrote the blog post two weeks ago, our fleet availability has been six nines and a half. For since for the whole point, just for that last six months. So is it like a rolling six months or is that since since all they started? That's a rolling six months. Okay. Yeah, we measure it every day. Yeah. I, I mean, I can log on to a system and show and see 30, 60, 90, 180 year and since inception numbers. And of course, the, the, the number of lines is, you know, related to the size of the systems. I mean, the smaller systems, because the, you know, you have less component, then it becomes more critical. Well, smaller systems have fewer components to fail, and so they're going to suffer fewer failures. And when we start really talking about the, that, that six nines and a half availability, it, if you look at it across the couple of hundred units we have in the field, it's between four and six hours of total downtime in the installed base. 
And that means that nobody could have had an outage of eight hours because the total allowed is eight hour, is less than eight hours. But if we had 10 times that many systems, that same availability would represent 60 hours of downtime. And some poor user could have been down for two days. So what you can read into it because of the nature of our business is both that the systems have been very highly reliable and that the outages have been short because you need that combination to reach the number. Just, do you have any percentage of customers that can't phone home with that availability data? Or? We have no customers who can't phone home. We have a not an insubstantial number of customers who won't phone home. Um, some of these systems are in places run by the federal government where they simply don't phone home. Some of these systems are in corporate entities who believe themselves as paranoid as the federal government, and so they won't phone home. Um, we have no customers who can't phone home. 